What's good family? Shout out to my doggy DJC for coming through and booting up your man the YB's coin situation. So we got some breaking news right now. Dillian the Shillian Shite has broken his silence, or rather, in fact, Dillian the Shillian Shite's team has broken their silence regarding the Dillian White and Tyson Fury debacle which took place in the last week regarding the press conference and everything else. And in fact, this isn't one of them ones where we're hearing from Dillian's wife, Dean White, or this isn't one of them ones where we're hearing from Dillian's second wife, Sporting Shillicons, Sporting White Cons, yeah? This isn't one of them ones. We're actually hearing from the key aficionado from Dillian White's team, who is actually his lawyer. Now, Frank Warren and Team Fury have aired out Eddie Hearn, saying, Eddie, you ain't even involved. And Eddie has unfortunately had to finally capitulate, and he himself has admitted within the last few days that he ain't involved. Oops. <laughs> yeah. Eddie Hearn's really just in the way, trying to do the most to make this fight not happen. That's Dillian. Eddie Hearn's role is to try and get in the way and make this fight a flop, given that, guess what? Eddie Hearn ain't got nothing else going on. Apart from Canelo, which he had to beg for, I exposed it on my other channel, YB USA. Apart from the fact Eddie Hearn had to ring Canelo Alvarez at four in the morning begging him, yeah? Saying, listen, I'm gonna jump if you don't sign with me. One of them ones, yeah? If it weren't for guilt tripping Eddie Hearn, if it weren't for Eddie Hearn guilt tripping Canelo, he wouldn't have no one. So on that basis, Eddie Hearn, big mad, he big sour, and Eddie Hearn's actually turned into the person, the very person he used to laugh at. When Eddie Hearn was on top three, four years ago, he'd laugh at Frank. Now he Frank. <laughs> Oops. And the difference is, Eddie Hearn's still 40 years old. Yeah? Eddie Hearn was, oh, I'm never going to be like them. Eddie, you had one bad six-month period, and you've capitulated, and you've turned into them, making stories up. Anyway, bottom line is, Frank, Frank Warren's confirmed weeks ago that Eddie Hearn ain't involved. Oops. Yeah? And instead... A man called Jeff Benz, Jeff Mercedes Benz, is the key general and the key legal Donny representing Dillian White in negotiations and also, most importantly, his arbitration with the WBC. So this is a leaked source from a particular... Yeah, bottom line, this right here is one of, from one of the YB sources, 100% no doubt about that. Yeah, Dillian White is in a bit of row with Tyson Fury's dinosaur promoter Frank Fisheyes Warren. That's the title of the story. Now, go into the particular quotes from his legal team and the Don called Jeff Benz. Here we go. Lawyer and business advisor, Jeff Mercedes Benz. In fact, Jeff knock off Mercedes Benz because he ain't the real thing. Because if, guess what? If Dillian White had a real legal team, his name would be the YB. Oops, <laughs> one of them ones. Jeffrey Benz, Jeffrey fake Mercedes Benz, told the Sun Sport Dillian White would have been more than happy to have attended the ticket launch event, but was not able to reach agreement with Frank Warren's Queensbury promotions on this, on even his very basic requirements, which are normal in the sport of boxing. But they didn't even give us notice of where and when this one-sided shindig would occur. It's really incredible. It really is incredible. We are dealing with dinosaurs here. Roar! Yeah, one of them. They bid 41 million coins for a fight, but are all over the place messy looking. They haven't even met Dillian's basic requirements, which are entirely usual and nothing out of the order ordinary. All Dillian has asked for is for a queen size bed so that he can sleep with his husband slash wife, Dean White. It goes on. Jeffrey Benz, Dillian's lawyer, continues. Dillian has been given no guarantee or escrow that he will actually get paid his coin for fighting. Queensberry haven't offered him a complimentary ticket allocation, which is standard. Not even a single ticket for his mother or any other opportunity to buy any for his family, friends or extended team. Yeah, including Dillian's other wives, Dean White and Sporting White. Team Fury won't advise us on whether and to which extent Fury is subject to anti-doping testing by UCAD or any other bodies in the same way that Dillian is regularly tested by both UCAD and VADA. 
they have so far failed to commence enhanced VADA testing as Dillian requested in the signed contract over a week ago. They used artwork with a photo of Dillian and didn't seek his consent or even feature him accurately with his WBC World Championship belt. And bizarrely, they won't even tell him the size of the ring that he will be competing in. Even though Dillian has spent a lot of time competing in a few rings, yeah, you best believe that. Dillian spent a lot of time competing in Dean's ring. Oops, <laughs> 100%. Anyway, Jeff Benz said the silent body snatcher, Dillian the Chilean shite, even fears Fury will pull out of the fight. He added, Dillian is chomping at the bit to fight Fury, even though he feels Fury doesn't want to fight him and fears that he will pull out in the, late in the day with a lame excuse like a broken fingernail or a nettle sting in view of Fury's recent track record. Dillian is keen to fight in spite of the unlawfully low split afforded to him in the purse bid by the WBC which he is appealing and which will ultimately be subject to a ruling by the Court of Arbitration for Sport, the legal global arbitration body for sports related disputes in Switzerland. Ask yourself, why is he going to interrupt his camp and risk COVID and travel complications when he has been the number one challenger since 2017 and waited longer than anyone in the history of the sport for his full world title fight. With seven and a half weeks to go, the fight is not a long way off now. So there is no need for Dillian to interrupt his camp for one or two days for a ticket launch event, especially when they have self-proclaimed best heavyweight of all time, Tyson Fury pushing the event. No doubt it sells out in seconds, and that must have been why they can't even spare a single ticket for Dillian's mum. But everything is becoming an obstacle. Everything is a diversion tactic or a stumbling block, even the most basic things. There is so little trust and faith over so many matters. They are nickel and diming us on everything. Fans need to ask why they have been put up this big purse but then are scrimping and scrounging on making the ticket launch event a big success. Dillian is disappointed that he has not been dealt with professionally and people should be more concerned with the promoters taking this fight seriously and delivering a fan experience that the fee paying fans deserve. Dillian's lawyer Jeff Benz adds it is naive of the promoters not to make real efforts to involve Dillian fully in the build-up. Dillian is obviously disappointed and will focus his energies on fight night. But if the promotion flops, I don't want to hear any white whinging from the Fury and Warren camps as they are over 21 and have been warned that only you, that you can only make so much noise clapping with just one hand. So... You man have now heard the allegations put by Dillian the Chilean Shites legal team, Muppet legal team, Jeff Benz. Jeff the fake Mercedes Benz, looking ass. And I'm going to break down the joke of this whole situation. First things first, he, this man Benz starts woofing about, oh, apples and pears, and my name Mr. Benz, and I'm a fake looking ass Mercedes Benz, and... Uh, the basic requirements haven't been met. He says it about five times. About five times he says the basic requirements haven't been met. Now, I'm sorry, but people for me, when people, when I hear people saying things again and again and again, without giving specifics, oh, the ba our, our basic requirements haven't been met. Well, you said that three times. Now, to be fair, as you've heard, he does go on to expand, but it's just woof. It's just unsubstantiated woof. And this is what I've been saying for the longest time. If I ever get involved in any of this stuff here, I don't understand why people don't, don't just leak receipts. Do you not get that? I'm baffled. Why hasn't, if this is the case here, if Frank Fish Eyes Warren is so bad, why why is Dillian the Gillian Shite silent? Oops. Why hasn't he been out here saying, listen, look at this receipt. I've been, for the longest time, the best example really is Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn back in 2019, when he exposed Louis' old tea stuck in the contract, Eddie Hearn put out the emails or something like that. He showed evidence. 
And it got, listen, next thing we know, Luis Ortiz's team was apologising because they've been exposed. So I don't understand why that didn't set a precedent. Why are these, why are we doing the he said, she said? Why can't you just put it out publicly? If I was in the business, and if I was the A-side, I'd be saying, listen, anyone who deals with us knows the, the, the communications are liable to be made public if you start gassing. Bottom line. Yeah, if anyone, if I hear anyone capping in this situation, the, the receipts are going to be leaked. Oops. That's what everyone should be signing contracts to. The public should be, no, don't get me wrong. If in situations there's no problems, then there doesn't need to be leaks. But oh, everyone should, I believe the, the governing body should make both parties sign. Or it should be in a contract that, listen, any woofing, any capping will be, get got. Yeah, any capping going to be exposed with receipts to the public? Oops. Because bear in mind, people, yeah, people like to talk, oh, these, these individuals and lawyers and whatnot, they love to say, oh, well, we can't talk about that and we can't talk about this. But guess what? When it comes to paying for pay-per-views, oh, we can't talk about it publicly and we've signed this and we can't speak about it. And I'd love to tell you, but I can't speak about it. Guess what? Like I said, when it comes to, when it comes, when they want the public's money, when they want the public coin, they're happy, in it? Everyone's happy to accept the public coin. But all of a sudden, when it comes to getting to the bottom of the truth, all of a sudden, the public are treated like mugs, and we're treated like outsiders, and we're treated like sidemen. Oh, I'd, I'd F the public. Yeah, sorry, public, you're not an insider. Sorry, public, you're not a big dog insider making millions. So you, you don't have a right to know. Well, I'm afraid to say. Yeah, when people put, when people put their hard-earned coin in, with, we're what we call stakeholders. Yeah, when people put their hard-earned coin in, we are share slash stakeholders. We own every single Donny who shows up to support an event owns a stake in that event, and therefore we want to see the accounts essentially. And the accounts are what happened. Show the communications. We want to see it all. Bottom line, and that way there ain't no woofing. There's no he said, she said, and this happens every time. Every time, and not. For example, at the moment, I feel Team Fury are telling the truth, but really. We don't know, do we? Let's be real now. Yes, from what I've bearing in mind, how Dillian's been acting, i.e. not turning up and being a crying like a virgin, yeah? Dillian might number one virgin. He love oh I've been so hard done by and Dillian might love to moan. Yeah, and we can't blame Dillian. Dillian's learnt to moan with the best of them, yeah? Him and I'm sure him and Dean have been doing a whole bunch of moaning together. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? One of them ones hundred percent. But anyway, listen. Like I said, we need to see the receipts, bottom line. Too much he said, she said. Oh, our basic requirements haven't been met. But I'm not going to give you no details. I'm just going to woof about how bad we've been done. Yeah, and the thing is for me, the fact Dillian was being silent, that set the narrative. And I've been saying, if Dillian's, if things are going wrong, why isn't Dillian telling us about it? Why are we, in it? if I'm being done so wrong, I'm going to tell people about it. I'm not going to go silent. Because for me, going silent, all that does is punk off your fans. Not turning up to press conference, all that does is punk off your fans. We're led to believe, oh, why be Dillian didn't make 300 grand? Wait a minute, if Dillian's such a big dog, why didn't he get his own plane? Why didn't he buy his own tickets to the show, Mr. Big Dog Dillian? Oops. It doesn't make no sense to me, because you'd think Dillian would be saying, you know what? All the fans that have supported me and all of my bum pay-per-views all these years... The least I can do for them. Let me be. If I'm not going to be there for Frank, let me be there for them. Because they're the people who, who put me in this situation. Why is it you're... For example, I'm not Dillian's fan, so I don't care. But he should. Dillian should be thinking, you know what? Yes, it's not ideal, but all them, all them fights my fans have supported me with, which have been subpar fights. I've made... I've changed my lifestyle. I've changed my... I've got... Dillian's been able to generate generational wealth from fighting pure bum fights and he's done, been able to do that on the back of the paying customer now he's in his biggest fight you'd have thought he'd say you know what yeah i'd rather not be do yeah i'd rather be silent right now yeah i'd rather lose my voice right now yeah i'd rather not turn to the press conference right now but i'm gonna do this for the peoples this is this is about more than just me being bitter this is about me standing up for the peoples and he, guess what, Dillian could have got there and said, listen, I'm here for my fans, but A, B, C, D, A, E, F, G's been going on. That's what the whole point of a press conference, that's what the whole point of being public is. You don't go silent and wheel out your your C-rate lawyer to cop, you know what I mean, to start capping for you, start woofing. That's all you've done, you've wheeled out your C-level lawyer to woof some more and get you in even more of a mess. Because guess what, 
Again, I told you, Dillian, take the 30%. Bite their hand off for 30%. Oh, no, YB, who are you? You're in the basement. Dillian's got some top lawyer. Oops, what happened then? Next thing you know, he got he got 17%. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wait there, with the YB, you had 30%. With some bum-ass, fake-ass, wannabe Mercedes-Benz lawyer, you got 17%. Oops. That sounds, that's, to me, that sounds like about $20 million. You've been bumped. And the next thing we know, guess what? Dillian not turning up to press conferences. He's going to get fined. Who Who giving this guy advice? Seriously. You know the WBC got it out for you, and yet you don't disclose your full purse. You know the WBC got it out for you, and you're not doing, you're not following contractual obligations, not turning up to press conferences. Who given you a disadvice? This goofy lawyer. Oops. Yeah, this goofy lawyer's gassed you up. Oh, don't worry, Dylan. Don't do this. Don't do that. I'm a big dog LA lawyer, and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. Guess what? Dylan gonna get punked to death. I, I guarantee you. And all you, all you Dylan, all you Brixton bummer fans. Are going to end up big sad when he gets taxed fifty percent of his earnings in 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 arbitration or whatever. Yeah, because all this stuff looks bad when Dillian goes to the arbitration and it turns out he ain't turning up, he ain't obliging, he ain't following the contract. He's going to get punked even more. You best believe that as well. Who giving him this advice? This goofazoid, Jeff. Jeff, you know what I mean? Jeff fake Mercedes Benz. Anyway, let me get let me get let me go through some more points here. Another thing. Dillian crying about, oh, he hasn't been given no escrow. Listen, the WBC handles all of that. I heard Eddie Hearn woofing about this as well. Oh, look at Frank Warren's, look at Frank Warren's company accounts. We don't trust he's got the money. This, that, the other, listen. Frank Warren's backed by BT, by Top, top Wank, by ESPN. Yeah, that's the bottom line. That's where the money's coming from. The money is coming from rights fees. And... Yeah, things may have happened in the past. I'm not saying Frank Warren's the most on point with a coin, but recently, when has he flopped? For example, Fury's been making big money with Wilder in the US. When's that money flopped? Oops. Yeah, Dillian, I'm being funny, but Dillian and his manky 8 million. We know Fury is. Listen, Tyson Fury, the only man who loves coin more than YB is Tyson Fury. So wait there, let's do some mental maths here. Wait there a minute. Has Tyson Fury complained about Frank Warren's coin? No. So. Think about it, if Frank Warren was struggling to pay Dillian's 8 mil, you'd have thought he'd have struggled to pay Tyson Fury's 20, 30 mil by now, wouldn't you? Oops. <laughs> yeah, you just, people are so, so low IQ. Oh, we want escrow. And besides, the WBC handles all of that. Don't forget, people. Remember, you have to look at the wider picture here. What were we hearing? When this fight was signed initially, when Eddie Hearn got punked out of the purse bid, what was the narrative Eddie Hearn and Team Shillian were wheeling out? Oh, Frank can't afford Eddie, I remember Eddie Hearn sitting there all smug, the same way he was smug about how Tyson Fury couldn't sell 80,000 tickets, <laughs> yeah? He, Eddie Hearn was sitting there saying, oh, I can't wait to see Frank Warren pay this deposit. Next thing we know, it gets paid within minutes. Or within minutes, the WBC punking Eddie Hearn and it's confirming it's been deposited. Eddie Hearn was, yes, oh, I can't wait to see this deposit get paid. Got paid. All of a sudden, the narrative changes now to, oh, we want to see the whole lot in escrow. It's always something with Eddie. And unfortunately, me, I go on a case-by-case -case basis. Obviously, Eddie Hearn man fans, you man just want to have a hard-on for Frank Warren no matter what. Me, I don't, I don't work like that. I follow information. And unfortunately, the information that's come out over the last X amount of time has been constantly Eddie Hearn bitter that he's been mugged off by Frank Warren. Every step of the way, Eddie Hearn hating. Oh, you're not going to pay the deposit. Oh, you're not going to do this. Oh, you're not going to sell 80,000. Every single way, also, he's been proven wrong. So on that basis, following that track, track record, Eddie Hearn, the new thing now is, oh, you haven't put the whole amount in escrow. That's not the procedure. Yeah? And guess what? Eddie, show us when you put the whole map. Show us when you put the whole amount in escrow for USIC. I bet Eddie Hearn didn't do that. Why? That's not the procedure. You've got to remember as well, fights create money in as much as there's nothing to say that Frank Warren and people aren't waiting for the money to come in. Yeah, do you understand what I'm saying? So, for example, when Eddie Hearn and well, when AJ was fighting Usyk and let's say Usyk's getting paid 10 mil, I bet Eddie Hearn didn't have 10 mil in escrow. Why? Because it messes with cash flow. People don't just have a whole bunch of cash sitting there. You wait for the cash, or you not all of it, but you wait for some of it to come in from the show. 
So if you if you got to pay Dilly in ten mil, you're gonna say, okay, well we're gonna make thirty forty mil from the show, and we're gonna put you some of that. You know what I'm saying? People don't sit around. It's inefficient to sit around with whole heaps of cash just sitting there not working for you. So what you want Frank to sit there and have forty mil tied up, just sitting not not working for. You know what I'm saying? He's got bills to pay, etc., etc. So keep. I've got no problem holding Pete. If Eddie Hearn has set a new standard of putting escrows, show us. And that might be the case. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah? But rather than Woof, rather than Cap, I'd rather Eddie Hearn come out and all of Dillian White's team come out and say, listen, yep, yeah, it's not the normal practice, but this is how me and Eddie Hearn operate. Has, has Dillian White got any evidence that Eddie Hearn puts his whole amount into escrow before the fight? If he hasn't, shut up and stop changing. It's because it's easier to move the goalposts when it's your opponent. Oh yeah, Frank Warren should have 40 million just sitting in cash for six months, not working. But we won't do that. Well, that's, that's not fair. I'm not a man fan. I expect people to treat everyone the same. I, I treat everyone the same. I don't pick, win oh, well, Eddie Hearn can do it this way because it's Eddie and I'm a man fan, but Frank Warren can't do it that way. I've never heard of it being done this way. Never, not even once. I've never heard of Eddie Hearn saying, oh, don't worry, we're going to keep the whole lot six months before or three months before the fight and just have it sitting there waiting. Never heard of that one. Yeah? Anyway, moving on to the next thing. I bet it's not going to get paid. You, Dilly wants to wor worry about turning up. Is what he wants to worry about. He wants to worry about finding his voice. And not getting knocked out by a 40 year old granddad again. That's what he does want to think about. Anyway. Next thing. He crying about the whole ticket allocation. Oh we haven't been given tickets. And this ticket, that ticket. Like Frank Warren said. The tickets. Haven't even got to that point yet. We've only just finished shutting dung. The whole shutting down the selling out 100, 300,000 in five minutes. Yeah? About you want tickets, you want this, you want that. And the next thing Frank Warren said, Dillian White has demanded half of the total floor seats. Who, Dillian, who do you think you are? You are a bum. And that's the problem. That's the problem a lot of Dillian White man fans haven't understood here. I had some goofy in my comment section saying, why be? Didn't you know Joseph Parker got paid 10 million? And Dillian White beat Joseph Parker, so he needs to get paid at least 10 million. Wait a minute. Joseph Parker was undefeated world champion who'd never been knocked out cold by some old, dusty dude, 50 year old dude. That's who Joseph Parker was at the time. Also, Joseph Parker was bringing the whole antipode market along with him. Yeah, the whole New Zealand and Australia thing. And by the way, guess what the numbers say? The numbers show that was the record pay-per-view. That was bigger than Klitschko and AJ. Oops. That's what Joseph Parker brought to the table. What does Dillian the, the bum bring to the table? Um, Dillian the bum brings average pay-per-views. Three, four hundred K pay-per-views. That's what Dillian the bum, that's what Dillian the Brixton bummer brings. I bet you want half the floor seats. Who do you think you are? Frank Warren's already made it clear. You get six tickets. That's it. Now, it's not it's not Frank Warren's fault. And I understand, oh, but YB, Dillian's got three wives. He's got three male wives. He's got sport. He needs to bring sporting icons. And he needs to bring Dean Lamar Scott White. He needs to bring all of his, you know what I mean? He needs to bring all of his. <laughs> that's on you, Dillian. Dillian, if you're in a polyamorous relationship with four other men, th that's not Frank Warren's. And again, I, uh, Frank Warren's a fair man. Frank Warren understands the times we're in. There maybe would have been a time when Frank Warren would have said, "You know what? We're not. I'm not. In, I'm not kind of encouraging that kind of behaviour." But listen, it's 2022, and I'm sure Frank Warren's happy to accommodate for you and all of your male girlfriends to come along with you, Dillian. No problem at all. However, you're gonna have to work it out. Yeah. Now, just because I'm hearing Dillian kicking off, oh, I can't have my wife. I can't have my wife and my husbands at the same at, in the same row together so I need half of the floor seat so I can put Dean and Dean on one side sporting silicons on another side and my wife and my female wife on another yeah Dylan the fact you're on the DL the fact you're on the DL trying to be sneaky and trying to keep keep people apart that's on you yeah if you're trying to separate all the, all the, all the individuals you're involved with that's on you that's not Frank Warren's job to facilitate you trying to be on the DL you trying to keep your <laughs> do you know what I'm saying yeah? If you've got a whole bunch of extra marital things going on with a whole bunch of dudes, that's your business. Don't bring that into the sport. It's not the sport's responsibility to keep your DLness going on. 
Yeah? Oh, but why be? I'm, my name's Dillian, and I'm on the DL, and I don't want no one to find out that I love being with, with, with Mandem. <laughs> yeah? That's on you, boss man. And, what, and besides, the question is, why are you trying to bring that kind of behaviour to the sporting world? What's your agenda, Dillian? Oh, you know, I want to I wanna make this event all about all the man I'm with. That's, that's weird, I'm sorry. Yeah? Super weird. Oh, I need I need Dean, I need Dean, I need sporting icons. I need all the man that I'm with to be there. I need my hubbies with me. Wow. Yeah? Anyway, about tickets. And besides, Frank Warren already told you, listen. Dillian, if you want, I'll, I'll bring your mum to the show. <laughs> wow. Frank Warren aired out, Dillian. I'll take, listen. Frank Warren said, listen, Dillian. I'll take your mum, I'll service your mum's personally to the show she gets service honey that's what i'm just telling you what frank said listen frank he listen frank frank the boss frank bricktop he got that kind of, i'm hearing he got that kind of game yeah frank warren said dylan i'll take your mum per trust me your mum will get the service at my show that's what frank said frank said i'm the i'm the 41 million i'm the record breaking million dollar man i'm the hundred thousand in 20 minutes man and you, if your mum wants to get service, you can get service. That's what he said. I'm just telling you what he said. That's on. You know what I'm saying? You need to take it up with Frank if you're mad about that. Yeah. Frank Warren got no problem bringing your mum to the show and showing her the, one of the best times of her life. That's what Frank said. Oops. 100%. Anyway, crying about tickets and about how you need to keep people separate. Listen. Moving on anyway. What else we got here? The whole, the whole testing thing's laughable. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. Has Tyson Fury had a bit of a weird time in the past with testing? Absolutely, but guess what? Your man Dillian, Mr. B-Sample, he ain't got no leg to stand on. Dillian is as dirty as anyone else is. So I don't want to hear about no testing rubbish. Yeah, because if Tyson Fury is dodgy, Dillian is as dodgy, if not worse. 100%. That's that one wrapped up. What else you got here? What other goofy narratives is Dillian's B-rate lawyer wheeling out? Here we go, yeah. He doesn't feel Tyson Fury is going to turn up now. Let me tell you this. I've got a video coming soon. I'm hearing if anyone's not going to turn up, it's Dillian. That's a fact. Look at the behaviour, people. Wait a minute. N not been speaking. Didn't want to sign. Not turning up to press conferences. Making excuses. This is all behaviour. People know me. I forecast things, and I'm telling you, there's a 70 to 80 percent chance Dillian and Dillian shite don't turn up for this fight. Just think, people. Yeah, Dillian and Eddie Hearn was banking on this show flopping. Everything, every time this show, yeah, ends up successful without them, they get more bitter and more bitter. And I'm telling you, that's likely to end up in Dillian saying, "You know what? I've lost." Remember, especially when the WBC ends up fining him half of his split. Dillian thought he was bad getting 20%. By the time the WBC had finished him, after having violated his contract, he can end up with probably 4 or 5%, and rightfully so, by the way. If I was in WBC right now, yeah, Dillian would be getting 4%. That'd be it. 4% or go, go somewhere else. Yeah, go and fight someone else. You know what I mean? Go, go and get your head boxed off by a middleweight. You sick. How about that? For no coin. That's what, if I was, honestly, uh, please, please MTK, please someone rig this to get the Iliomark 4%. I'd love, no, on, genuinely, I'd love nothing more to hear the WBC has ordered 4%. Honestly, uh, genuinely, uh, genuinely, 100%. Think of the, f think of the most fire female on Instagram. In fact, there's no, there's no women on Instagram that could get the YB as hard as I'd be if I heard, if I got to, listen, if I got the, if I got the opportunity to report on the WBC ordering 4% for Dillian. I'd be so hard. You wouldn't believe it. Super hard. Yeah? Super duper hard. I'd love it nothing more to than to say, listen, Dillian, you got punked some more. <laughs> oh, man, you know, my name Dillian. I've been done bad. And... To hear him crying some more. I, lo I love hearing Dillian cry. I love it. To hearing Dillian cry, man. Hear hearing the Brixton bummer cry. My favourite thing to do, honestly. I love hearing him whine. Oh, man, you know, I've been done wrong and... It's 400 days, and I'm a, I'm a big bum, and, you know, I love bum, and I love Dean's bum, and, you know, all that kind of stuff, whining, looking at, whining, sounding ass, embarrassing, big heart back, oh, man, you know, how my name Dillian, I'm the Brixton bum, and, I'm a big, you know, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a yardie, and you, you, you ain't no yardie, listen, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me set the record straight, no yard man gets knocked out cold, by some neck dusty old don at 50 year old. That's what a yard man don't. That's what don't, that's what don't happen to a yard man. How about that? 
Yeah, no, I'm telling you, that's the standards. I spoke to the people who made the yard man qualifications. I'm telling you now, there ain't no yard man who can be chinned by a 50 year old Dusty. Cold as well. You weren't, it, people not people slag off Tyson Fury, but he get up. Oops. And he got punched by the hardest punching heavyweight in the last God knows how long. Dillian gets punched by some dude who went and got no power, Povetkin. Even, even, even the Boogaloo Bear, even Anthony the friendly Boogaloo Bear Johnston didn't get KO'd by Povetkin. Didn't get rocked by Povetkin, but your man Dillian, the Brixton bum, out cold. No questions about, no questions about it. And the worst thing is, all you Dillian fans were gassing him. Oh yeah, Dillian doing this, Dillian doing that. Next thing you know, Dillian out cold. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. Do you know how bad it is to be back in the man who went out cold against Dusty 50 year old? It's bad. Anyway, listen. Like I said. Dillian ain't gonna do nothing. It's what he ain't gonna do. About and if anyone's gonna pull out, it's gonna be Dillian. Now I'm not gonna sit again, I'm not no I ain't no man fan. I'll be lying to you. Has Tyson have I criticized Tyson Fury in the past for pulling out? Absolutely. However Guess what? In this situation in terms of who's had the signs, people know. One of the reasons I was sceptical of Tyson Fury was he pulled out, that's the first thing, and also he was the one trying to avoid the Wilder fight for whatever reason. He was the one forcing it to go to court for whatever reason. That's why I didn't like it. Now, in this situation, in this case, Tyson Fury was begging. Tyson Fury wanted Dillian in February, people. You forget that it was literally November, Tyson Fury and Bob Arum was in the interview saying, please Dillian, come to the table and just sign this. We want to we wanna get in your cheeks bad. We want to get in your cheeks more than you've been in Dean's cheeks, which is super bad. Super bad and super often. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Tyson Fury said, listen Dillian, as much as you've been, as much as you love digging out Dean White's guts, we want to be, we want to we wanna dig yours out some more, even more than that. Yeah. As much as you're committed to digging out your husband's guts, Dean, we even more committed. You're going to be known, trust me, by the time Tyson Fury finish with you, you're going to be known as D Dillian Fury. Because he's going to be pappy. He's going to be daddy <laughs> to you anyway, 100%. That's what, that's what Fury said. F and that's how mad it was. Fury was that desperate to dig out Dillian's guts, yeah? He was, he was, Tyson Fury was, was so desperate to dig out Dillian's guts. He was prepared to pay him more. The WBC sanctioned twenty percent. Tyson Fury said, "Dear, dear, we want you bad. We want you super bad. Never mind twenty. We'll give you twenty-five, thirty percent. Just let us get in them cheeks of yours. Just let us get. You know what I mean, we want a piece of the Brixton bummer. Yeah, we want to give the we want to give the Brixton bummer real bumming. That's what he said. Hundred percent. Call me a liar. We all heard it. I heard it." And Dillian and his bad management said, oh no, we don't want to get our guts dug out by Tyson Fury. We want to go to arbitration and try and run some more. And we're going to go silent. And we're going to lose our voice. And we're going to not turn to the press conference. And we're going to punk all our fans off. But, and I have to give Dillian credit because Dillian knew the room he was talking to. Dillian knows that, wait a minute, my man fans are always going to be, my man fans are ride or die. And they are. Dillian's man fans, even though they've been punked off, they're still saying, oh, Dillian... Dillian's right. Dillian's right to punk us all off. I love the fact Dillian punking us. Number one man fans. Now, the second to last thing Dillian White's manager says is that Dillian couldn't afford to interrupt his camp to fly to wherever. Now listen. Whatever you're doing, Tyson Fury doing. Oops. So all these things are excuses. Oh, we don't want to go there. I mean, Dillian, why is it? Fair enough, yeah. If Dillian wasn't about promotion, I'd understand. If Dillian White hadn't hard sold all of his bum fights versus bums, oh, why be the London Derby? We got Ian Lewinson versus the Brixton bummer Dillian White. I heard. Listen, when that fight was going on, I didn't hear the end of that fight. Oh, why be Dillian versus London Derby? London Derby, West versus East, and North versus South, and all that kind of stuff was going on at the time. Dillian couldn't stop selling it. Now he's in a fight which actually people are interested in, not not some goofy, fake, cheap ass knockoff Ian Lewinson derby. And all of a sudden, Dillian can't. Oh, what's the point going to a press conference? Well, why didn't you say that when you were selling the Dave Allen fight? Oops. Yeah. Oh, guess what? Dillian White was there for this, to sell the Dave Allen fight. He was there to sell the the Lucas Brown fight. 
Lucas Big Daddy Willy Helmet. <laughs> yeah, Willy Helmet looking ass. <laughs> anyway, that's the next hypocrisy exposed. And the last thing, anyway, he says is that it's so funny. He goes, oh, the, but if the promotion flops, I don't want to hear any whining from the Fury and Warren camps. And it's like the other, listen, the promotion didn't flop. But if it had flopped, what do you mean you don't want to hear no whining? They're paying you. Frank Warren's made it clear. If it was down to Eddie, you keep talking about you want more money, yeah? If it was down to Eddie, you'd be getting $2 million less than what Frank bid. There's your bonus. I bet you want a million dollars for turning up. Who do you think you are, Dillian? You're a bum. Seriously, and that's why. Genuinely. Never mind 4%. If I was in WBC, he needs to be stripped. Bottom line. If you violate a contract, you should be out of here. You forget that it's supposed to be a privilege to fight for the world championship. Who do you think you... Think, think about people. What message does it sound? This is right here, yeah. I'm going to do a video on this in its own right. So the WBC get the message. But really, what message does it sound out or send out to the boxing world or to the world in general that a challenger cannot turn up to a press conference that the champion's at? It makes a mockery of the institution of being a world champion. Oh, wait there. The world champion has to be there, but the challenger can sit back and make demands that the champion isn't making. Tyson Fury didn't ask for it to be there. He understands. Wait a minute. That's where money comes from. And imagine the precedent this sets. Just because it's Eddie Hearn and Eddie Hearn's silver spoon throwing his toys out the pram and told Dillian White not, not, Dillian White not to turn up. But imagine now. Is this what we're going to do, people? And all the goofy Dillian White man fans who have started picking up the narrative of, oh, it's not in his contract. He doesn't have to come. So are you man saying then, for every for every purse bid now, you're saying the other side shouldn't turn up. So for all the Eddie Hearn press, for all the Eddie Hearn purse bids he wins, should Frank Warren tell his side not to turn up? Is that where you want the sport to go? You mongroids. Proper bunch of mongrels. 100%. Listen to yourselves. Oh, why be, but I'm Dillian White's man fan. So yeah, oh, of course Frank Warren's fighter should turn up to Eddie Hearn's purse bids, but because I'm Dillian White's number one man fan, I'm enjoying, honestly, I've seen so many man fans. Oh, YB, oh, I'm loving Dilly not turning up. Yeah, I love seeing it, it's really good. So what, basically, you're saying press conferences should just end then? Because, if the, and I actually think Frank should be petty. I think from now on, don't bother. Let's not bother at all then, because it ain't benefiting us, is it? Let's be real now. What's the point? Let, let, let no one turn to, pre let's not bother doing press conferences no more then. It's not fair that why should Frank Warren send his fighters there to help Eddie Hearn's events and then not be, not be received the other way? Who does that? It's weird. It, honestly, it's really weird and it shows you how vulnerable and how emotional Eddie Hearn is because I've never heard of this before. Never heard of it. Never heard of a fighter not turning up to a press conference because he's sour about something. If you were sour, you shouldn't have signed the fight. That's what I don't understand. Another, another point Frank Warren made. Why has Dillian White signed it? If he didn't want to do all the things that are in the thing. But anyway, like I said, ultimately, Dillian White has negged on his contract and he needs to be moved out. And he needs to be made an example of. If you try and... You, you think you're too smart for your own good and you're not smart, Dillian. You're one of the dopiest people I've ever met in my life, genuinely. I've never seen someone so dopey. And the fact you, the fact you think you're being advised to do... <laughs> is wild. I think, genuinely, I think this guy might be an inside man for Team Fury. Truth be known. That's the only explanation, because there's no way someone with Dillian White's interest is telling him to keep making things worse for himself. Yeah, Dillian, don't turn up to the press conference, which you're contracted to do. <laughs> Imagine, what a goofy, what a dopey ass, Dillian. Yeah, I think that's probably, that's probably, you see, the thing is, when you've got, when you've got a man digging out your guts, I think it must do something to the brain chemistry in your head. It's not Dillian's fault. Yeah, Dillian White is topping off so many man, his head probably hurting from all the vibrations, from yeah, from all the gyro. <laughs> Listen, Dilly, Dillian White's got some long-term brain trauma from all the top he's been given in Brixton. Yeah, he known as the Brixton top artist, number one top star. Yeah, he give top, he love giving top. <laughs> yeah, so listen, what can I say, man? Dillian White has had provided a great public service. He provided the number one top in Brixton. You can, no one can get brains like they, listen. Dillian White is the number one Brixton bum brain giver. He gives the number one brain. Best at giving brain. 
Jillianers. <laughs> you big. Listen, Jillian. Stop giving out. How about this? Stop focusing on your brain game. Yeah? Stop focusing on braining man off in Brixton and turn up to the press conference and do what you're supposed to do.